there's a excellent tool, which I'm going to highlight, which really helps with your organization strategy. So one tool which is paramount is the strategic target I talked about last week. So that's here in the Guiding the Business, and it's just a one-page document which says, this is where our business is going. This is who we are. These are our goals for a certain period of time, one page. And there's examples and all kinds of tools in here if you weren't here last week. Another key strategic tool that helps is a budget. I like to call it a financial plan, but I use the word budget because um, it kind of helps people to see what it is. So for any business, and these are like the basics of a business plan, what you would learn in business school, you need a vision for where the business is going, what it is. You need a good organization strategy or chart, and you also need a financial plan. So there's a template that you can pull from the library, which is similar to this one. This one's just filled in a little bit as an example. So you've got where you are now, and then you've got where you want to be. Now you can't budget month to month in finite detail, everything that's going to happen between now and the next four years. It's just impossible, so don't even try that. But what you can do is get a rough picture of it. So I like to go quarters. So Q1, 2, 3, 4 of one year, and then on to the next. It allows you to break strategy into tactics. So the big strategic goal is this. And so then what are we going to do this year and the next year and the next year? Okay, and then what are we going to do by quarter? And then what are we going to do by month? So at least get this quarterly picture of where you are now and where you want to be. So when you've reached your strategic target, it's going to be this N column. And then Q1 of the year we're in is where you are now. So you want to break up that goal and figure out what the, what the annual goal is and what the quarterly goal is. So this is rough. So Q1, you're going to have profit centers, so what it is you're selling. If on your financial statements you take a look at those and this just says income or sales and you've got this huge number, if, if, if you only sell one thing, then you know maybe that's accurate. But if, if you sell multiple products and services, then that's not accurate. You need profit centers. You need to see your income um, in categories so you can then plan for it. And then if, depending on the type of business you're in, you can then tie your variable cost to that product as well. And this is, you know, kind of what we were talking about here with the production department and matching that with sales. So as this department grows, this department grows so that this department doesn't grow so much that it's dumping so much on this department that it hasn't been able to grow and that we can't see if it's being delivered profitably or not or until it's too late. So if you look at this with a microscope a little bit, you can see profit centers and then you can measure profitability of each profit center. You can say, are they delivering at the 60%? We're budgeting for that. Are they doing it or not? So in, the bud, in your financial plan, try to get your arms around those numbers. What percentage of sales does this labor number represent? What should it represent? Then you may need to, if you don't know this, then you may need to look further at your processes. So what processes can we put in place so that we can measure labor and materials against revenue or income? So this may show you where you're missing documented processes that need to be implemented right away so that you can then start to calculate and see your profitability. So plan out your infrastructure as, to, as well, rent, salaries, office expense, supplies. You can pull all this information you should be able to from your um, accounting system. This is just a P&L, basically. This is the income. This is the cost of goods sold or variable costs. This is the fixed cost. If you do that and you're looking at your variable costs and there's nothing here and it's all in fixed costs, well then maybe you need to make some adjustments to again to your accounting and to your chart of accounts so you can start to see what your variable costs really are. Then ultimately down to the prize down here, which is the net profit. 
So when building this financial plan, start to think about what's a good net profit for my business? What's a good industry standard? What amount of money do I want to be making once everything is said and done, everyone's paid, including your salary for the work you do in the business? What's left over in terms of net profit to reinvest back into the business and to give you money as the shareholder? So this is just like an algebra expression. If you know what your net profit needs to be, you can fuss with the in income to see what that needs to be, put in your labor, adjust. So in this first Q1, this might be unprofitable, it might be is what it is right now, but then as you start to plan out, build out the quarters until you get to the goal at the end. You can even do little cell notes inside of here, insert comment, and then you can put in, you know, this is what we were thinking when we put this number in. That's really helpful for, for financial planning and for budgeting. So use a tool something like this, you know, even if you just did year to year, that's better than nothing. Then from your organization chart, you can start to think, okay, I want to hire this production manager, Q1 2014, let's go down to the budget and put their salary in. There's a great website called salaries.com, and it'll give you like projected sal typical salaries in your geographic area. If you're questioning, well, what will I need to hire, pay a, you know, department head or a manager. So you can put those numbers in and then you start to see what happens down here to the bottom line. So then that begs the question, what about sales? So then sales need to go up. But then I need to spend more on advertising. So start playing with it until you plant until it comes out to be some kind of a rough plan that you think will work. And then start to follow it. And then make adjustments. You can't build a financial plan like this and then look at it, you know, two months later and say, well, that was just a waste of time. It didn't even work. You have to adjust and then adjust and go back and adjust again in order for it to become a document, a strategic tool that really works. Are there any questions? No? All right. This budgeting tool here, um, if I didn't say that already, is in the library. And it's a template that you can pull from the library here. It's also got a, a work plan that explains how to um, take uh, information from QuickBooks, like from your P&L, and dump it into the spreadsheet. So it gives that. You don't use QuickBooks, and that's not going to help you, but it's, um, that's there. And then the, the heart of it is just the template that you would use in the, spread, in the spreadsheet. And you may already have something like this that you like better, but this is like a good place to start if you don't have anything. Um, all right, so using your organization chart. This is all about using it as a strategy tool. It's not just a chart that you would throw up there and boom, it's done. This is making it come to life, making it something that you can use as the entrepreneur, as the manager, for a way to kind of manage and grow your department. If, once you've built your organization chart, if you do have managers, you can teach them to use it as well. Because this is the vision for the production department right here. This is where we're going. And ultimately, the job descriptions are built for every position, which is what we're going to talk about next week. So now as the manager of this department, I not only have the vision for the department, I've got the key positions that I need to have in place, and I have the key processes that they need to be operating in order for us to get closer to the vision. And I have a complete set of training documents here on how to train and keep employees on track. I've got a way to measure if they're doing this well or not so I can replace them or give them further training. So the organization chart inside of Touchstone becomes this dynamic thing that just helps you not only as the entrepreneur but also as the manager and then ultimately as the technician because I, as the customer support person, now I know everything I'm supposed to be doing. And theoretically, I know how I'm supposed to be doing it all. So next week, we're going to talk about more specifically about job descriptions, um, how to build them in Touchstone, and how to use them as a management tool, how to use everything in Touchstone so that it becomes not just that documentation we have over there, but real active tools which help you day to day in your business.